the time has finally come to install Mega Squirt into the Eclipse. So I've got everything I need kind of laid out. I got a few more things I need to go grab out of the shed before I can really get started. The other things I needed to order for this car were these heat shrink butt connectors. These are 3M butt connectors. I got three bags of them, these larger ones, and then I'm probably just going to be using the smaller ones. My voltage regulator is in here. It's got a wire harness. There's the box in there. It has the actual regulator in it for the alternator. Serial adapter for my laptop, for my computer. And that was the only things I had to order. Other things I bought, fuse box from AutoZone. This is just that one where you just plug fuses in, then you stick a speed uh, connector on the side. Some self-drilling bolts to mount the voltage regulator and to bolt down the mega squirt. Some of this wire conduit needed this for the actual wiring harness at whatever I have to redo myself. Other things, I got the wire harness which came with the mega squirt. One thing I realized after I got it out and started looking at it is that all the wires are labeled on the very ends. They have the pin out that they are related to like where they are, where they plug into the mega squirt. One modification that had to be done was to run the dual coil packs that are on the car. The mega squirt has only one ignition output, so the modification that was done to it allows it to run two ignition coils. That's everything that I have pretty much. I'm going to start by coming over here and just removing stuff. I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna cut these wires off. I'm cut two ECUs sitting in here just because uh, this one I pulled up I got at the junkyard and was running it because it ran better than this one but I left that one in there just in case this one took a dump on me. I'm gonna go and remove all this, cut those off. I might move that fuse box out of the way and I'm gonna start tracing wires back and just gonna start by removing the stuff that I don't need and then identifying everything I do need and figuring out which wire is actually what. Basically, once I have everything I don't need removed, have everything organized and I know what's what, it'll make the actual installation process very easy. Of course, one of the most important things to do anytime you're messing with wiring is to disconnect your power source so you don't melt stuff or electrocute yourself or set things on fire. There's one of the ECUs out. For everybody who's been wondering, because I get a lot of people that question me as to why it's so difficult finding an ECU for this car and everything, the plug on my ECU is entirely different from every other year, second generation DSM. Every other 428 car that's 96 and up has two plugs running into the ECU, whereas this one has just one giant plug running into it, and that's why I had such a hard time even finding one. There's number two, bracket and everything. This ECU is literally zip tied into place. I've got my HID ballast in this plate out of the way. That'll help a little bit. I think I'm gonna pull my catch can off of here as well real quick just so I can see everything I need to see. This is such a mess down here. There's some plug that goes to nothing down there. I'm gonna continue chipping away at this. I wish this was a harness I could unplug, but it isn't, so that thing's gonna have to just chill there. But I need to get this entire harness that runs to all of the sensors pulled all of the way out so that I can have access to all of the sensor wires from right here and then once I have that, we'll actually start getting somewhere. Alright, well I am definitely making progress. I've got the entire harness hanging out right here. There's a few sensors plugs that are still behind the engine block and there's one plug that won't come out and I think it is the one for the crank position sensor because it's got three wires that run into it. But I went in here and I've started removing the corrugated plastic or everything and uh, I accidentally cut a few wires cutting into it, but it looks like every wire I cut runs into the old ECU harness. Like That's where I'm at. I got that plastic cover off that was sitting right here and found out for some reason all the wires run into whatever this mess is. There's like two plugs, but the wires don't come out of them, so I'm not sure what the hell is going on here. I'm going to have to figure all of that out, but what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to start peeling all of the plastic and wire protectant off of these. And I'm going to start running back towards this and every plug or every sensor plug I don't need anymore. I'm just going to cut off of those and then every one I still need I'm going to also cut off and set those off to the side. 
and then everything else that's in there because I think there's stuff for like my tachometer is in there there's a couple other things in there for the gauges out inside that run into that I think so I'm not entirely sure though so we'll just have to see but that is where I'm at on it wanted to give you guys a real quick progress update once I've got everything exposed and all the wires freed from this mess I'm gonna continue peeling wires away and hopefully next time I get back with you guys I will have a much better idea of where I'm at all right everybody it's time for a quick update I now have the entire harness pretty much separated Everything I still need is down in here, and then I got a few wires that I'm going to also keep attached. Right now what I'm about to do is I'm trying to figure out which wires coming out here are the power wires coming from the relays down there. One is the ASD relay slash main relay. The other is the fuel pump relay. I need to figure out which one of those is the power wire running up here from it and it's got to be one of these two wires right here and everything else in this i basically don't need i've been testing to make sure all of my like lights headlights brake lights taillights turn signals and stuff still work as i unplug harnesses and everything is continuing to still work i've got this thing like bungee strapped up out of the way as you'll see i've got all of this stuff like pulled up out of the way i got that plastic cover out of there and everything and I went and I unbolted part of the harness so I could bring it up here, make it a little bit easier for me to reach it. And uh, yeah, making a lot of progress. Once I have everything I need on this separated and everything else that is no longer going to be used, no longer necessary, chopped off of it, I'll go and I'll put this harness back where it's supposed to be. And then I will start labeling or making a list of what each one of these wires, individual ones down here is for. So I'll find one and just use it as an example. Like this one right here is the throttle position sensor. So I'll go and I'll label which one does what based on where each one plugs into the sensor and everything. And I'll just do that with each and every single one, write it down on a piece of paper or make a list on my phone or something so that when I'm going and I have the mega squirt harness coming out, all I have to do is take the mega squirt wire, which is already labeled, the harness is sitting over there, and plug it. I just basically just take that and then look at my list, figure out which wire is supposed to go to that one and plug them together heat shrink them and everything and then eventually be able to start the car GoPro battery is going to die soon so I'm gonna go get this thing plugged in and charge it and hopefully by the time it is charged I can give you guys another update and we will see where I am at battery is full another update I have pretty much completely sorted through everything I do and don't need from the original harness so here is what everything is. I accidentally cut the plug for the starter wire out, but I did find the wire that goes to it, and it is up here open. These two wires right here are switched 12 volt. These two yellow wires up here are also switched 12 volt. This blue wire running into this relay is the fuel pump one, so the black plug is fuel pump, gray plug is main relay, or it's going to be my main relay and of course I got my red wire that runs to my fan stuff strung over there and then all these wires are the ones running out of the relays a couple of these are going to be the grounds going in and then two of them are power going in two are signals going in and uh, for some I guess it's just for the stack 420a thing but the one relay, the main relay, or it's called the ASD relay, automatic shutdown, is constantly on, I found out, which was really weirding me out when I was trying to figure out how this thing was wired up. So I'm going to be undoing that and making it switched as well as the fuel pump relay being switched. And then the fuel pump relay ground gets run to the ECU, and the ECU will cut the ground to it when the car isn't running, which is kind of clever but that's how that whole thing works the car has to both be on and the ecu has to be telling the fuel pump to run in order for it to get any power and the uh, main relay also has to be on before the fuel pump gets any power i'm going to begin putting some of the relay harnesses together up there so i've got to attach the two signal wires 
I'm going to find somewhere to put the grounds for them both. I will have the ground for one, actually, because the one gets grounded to the ECU. I'm going to start building a little bit of a loom. All of the teardown process is 100% done. One thing that was funny is the only wire that, or the only wires left from that massive harness that ran down here that I'm going to be using are all these ones out of the relays, the four signal wires, the one wire for the starter, and that's it. All the rest of that stuff got chucked. That stuff was for sensors I no longer have, for fans, all kinds of other messy stuff that I no longer have any use for. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. All right, so I've made a bit more progress. As you'll notice, I got the relays put back up here. And earlier, like I mentioned, I got all of the wiring figured out for those. So this right here is the ground wire for the main relay. And then the power for both of these relays runs up here to my bus bar. And the ground for the fuel pump relay has to run to the ECU. So I went and I strung it up here somewhere and it fell in behind. It's this white wire right here. That is the ground for it. That's everything that's up here anymore. Everything else is totally removed and it's cleaned out this entire area. I am going to go in here and redo some of the fan wiring. The wire, because I used like speaker wire originally to wire the on and off switch from inside the car, which is what this one is. And I might run a new wire in for my temp sensor or something because I want to run this wire around and up so that I don't have wires running over top of the valve cover because I like how this looks without wires on top of the valve cover. It just looks way cleaner the way it is right now. Like I said, I want to do a sort of a partial tuck if I can. Next thing I really need to do is get the fuse box that I bought, which is sitting somewhere over here. It's right there. It's just one of those ones from AutoZone that you pop whatever size fuse in that you need and attach spade connectors to it. I'm going to probably mount it up here on the firewall. I was honestly thinking up maybe that's a little bit too high because I won't be able to get the spade connectors to reach it. But somewhere up there or maybe here somewhere, I'm not really sure. But it's going to go in the engine bay somewhere and I'm going to run power from that main relay which is this one right here question mark yep this one right here and i'm going to run about four or five wires off of that run into this and then put the right size fuses what the mega squirt calls for in here basically once i've got all the power ran to everything i can get the mega squirt mounted inside of the car and start feeding that harness through and I might start redoing some of the fan wiring as well but I don't have any wire like black wire laying around anywhere so I'm actually gonna have to go to AutoZone and buy some in the morning which is the next point I'm gonna get to is at some point I'm gonna have to stop tonight and go to bed and then come back to this tomorrow if I do get any further the power wires for everything is all the further I'm going to end up getting and then after that, I'm going to go to bed. I don't even know if I'm going to do that because it's starting to get a little bit cold. I'm starting to get tired. I woke up kind of early today and got a late start on this. But I've got the most difficult part, hopefully, knock on wood. And the most difficult part is out of the way, which is chasing through all of the factory wires. And with all of this mess gone and sorted through and everything that I don't need gone and no longer here... I can get started on other things that are more fun, I guess, and definitely more rewarding. So I'll get back with you guys probably sometime tomorrow, show you guys what I got done with the power wire, and we will continue from there.